good evening i had recently shared a video on the nrp changes and uh, i saw professor satyan's uh, pictorial representation of these changes uh, most of you would have come across professor satyan's uh, pictorial uh, representations of various concepts in neonatology so he has this unique style of uh, giving the information in a simplified manner so for those of us who are visual learners it's a very uh, useful tool and obviously uh, if you print this and uh, keep it with you it uh, works as a ready reckoner so uh, just a quick uh, review of uh, how he has put this uh, overview of the nrp 9th edition practice changes so it's easier to start from this section which is related to the umbilical cord management so uh, delayed cord clamping the previous recommendation was 30 to 60 seconds and it has been revised to at least 60 seconds which is in line with what the who and other bodies suggest and it should really be that way uh, because 30 seconds may not be adequate uh, iucm some of you had asked what it stands for so it's uh, intact umbilical cord milking so there is a clear message obviously from dr anup uh, kataria's uh, study that uh, less than 28 weeks some um, intact umbilical cord milking is not recommended and uh, for non vigorous infants where delayed cord clamping is not an option you can do the umbilical cord milking at 35 to 42 weeks in the babies between the 28 to 34 weeks margin there is not enough evidence to recommend intact cord milking so uh, this is related to the cord management which is the first step in the algorithm and in terms of uh, the other change in the algorithm we have the target oxygen saturation table starting at two minutes instead of one minute which is really a pragmatic change because very rare that we have the uh, one minute uh, saturation uh, kind of the probe connected by that time so uh, the other aspect of the algorithm is the question related to suctioning so we have dry position and gentle tactile stimulation if the breathing is ineffective so it's important the word gentle is used here and clear airway if needed so instead of using the word suction we are using clear airway if needed so the point the stress is on use suction only if needed so many of us are in the habit of routinely suctioning uh, you don't really need to suck out and just turning the baby to the side most of the time brings out the even the frothing secretions and remember frothing at the mouth is not necessarily a need for suctioning because it doesn't indicate obstruction it's just the baby's own effort to clear the secretions turning to the side is a useful option as in the recovery position in anesthesia as well in these babies when they are just stabilizing you can do that provided they are breathing well if they are not breathing well obviously for the assessment you keep them in the neutral position with the forehead uh, facing the roof uh, the Mr. Sopa obviously uh, the sequence is not dictated so that's why he has put it in a jumbled fashion so you look at the baby and decide what need to, needs to be done and uh, the order can be chosen by using the steps most likely to be helpful in that scenario in terms of ventilation so the supraglottic airway or the laryngeal mask airway is gaining prominence there are many units who have started using them uh, as a tool in the bedside and in the labor room as well it's quick to introduce uh, mostly the nurses can use that as well proglotic airway is quite easy to introduce and uh, most of us have already been trained and it's used for the nrb8 as well uh, the size is a problem that we have only the size one but nowadays uh, we have size zero in one of the companies marketed as well i believe and if we get that uh, we can use it for babies one kilo and above the size uh, one has been used for babies 1.5 1.6 kilos and above even though uh, the manufacturer says it's about two kilos so it's a good idea to use it early as the seal will be good and it doesn't get displaced uh, many studies have looked at the inter observer differences between uh, the mask usage and obviously distraction can displace the mask position quite easily uh, so it's a welcome change and uh, it's not only an additional uh, airway option at advanced stage but even in the beginning you can use the supraglottic airway in terms of the initial fio2 obviously uh, for the more than 35 weeks we stick with the 21 percent or room air as the first option 
Of course, if you need chest compression, you have to increase to 100% immediately as you can't monitor. In the babies 32 to 34 weeks, you consider using between 0.21 to 0.3 FAO2. The less than 32 weeks, there is a big move away from uh, using uh, room air as uh, the response of these babies with oxygen is shown to be better. And uh, we have a recent meta-analysis which showed that uh, higher FAO2 at start even 90 to 100% is better. And there are studies which looked at the laryngospasm response being less when higher oxygen is used. And a higher number of babies have heart rate more than uh, 100 within the first five minutes, which leads to a better outcome in the very small babies if you use a higher FAO2. So even though it says more than 0.3, many of us may start using 0.5 to 0.6 in the extreme uh, premature babies less than 26 weeks. And uh, the Torpedo 2 study results, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's published yet, but it was presented in the PA meeting and the publication is eagerly awaited as well. In terms of uh, ventilation uh, rate, I mean, the previous recommendation was 40 to 60 breaths, but uh, it has been changed to 30 to 60 breaths per minute to be more pragmatic with the fluctuation that happens and the uh, user can modify the rate according to the response. The initial peak inspiratory pressure was different uh, for a range of 20 to 25 uh, previously. Now it has been set as 25. Uh, for the premature baby is less than 32 weeks, you aim for 20 to 25, while for more than 32 weeks, uh, you keep it as 25 and increase to 30 if needed. So uh, keeping it as 25 for both term and premature babies makes it easier to understand in terms of the staff setting up the, the Neopuff or whatever equipment you're using for the ventilation. If the chest compression continues for more than five minutes and the compressor experiences fatigue, should consider changing roles. And uh, after the chest compression and improvement in heart rate, if the pulse oximeter reading is reliable, we start reducing the FAO2 uh, to target the uh, saturation target for the age. Uh, obviously, uh, we increase to 100% at the start of chest compression because you cannot rely, reliably monitor the oxygenation. And there are a couple of uh, changes related to the endotracheal tube. The insertion depth is measured to the anterior edge of the upper maxillary gum. So diagrammatically, it's represented here. So the gum is a fixed part while the, uh, the lips can move away uh, due to the tape or due to the physical uh, pressure. So obviously, we need to calibrate the fixings length for the gum uh, level and get used to that. But it's probably for the benefit and studies have shown that as well. In terms of uh, the endotracheal tube size as well, a slight modification. I don't know how much it will impact in practice. So less than 800 gram uh, category has been introduced 22 to 25 weeks. The endotracheal tube size of uh, 2.5 and 2 can be considered in this group. Of course, most of us don't keep the two size for a long time because it's more difficult to secure it, more difficult to suction it as uh, fine uh, suction catheters are difficult to get. And uh, obviously the measurements, the volume guarantee and things may not be reliably done. In the 80 to 1,200 grams, uh, 26 to 28 weeks, you can use 2.5 size. 1,200 to 2.2 kilo, 29 to 34 weeks, you use 3 size. And uh, more than 2.2 uh, kilo, more than 34 weeks, 3.5 size ET tube. So we don't want to go for very large ET tubes because uh, most of the time the intubation is for a short period. The larger the ET tube size, the higher the risk of uh, edema as well as the difficulty in the procedure increases as the tube size is more, as per, especially if it's an awake intubation. Of course, in the labor room scenario, these are floppy babies and the baby shouldn't be resisting. So there's a slight change in the 200 gram range. It may be a little difficult to remember, but it's not much different from what we used before. So you have the flexibility uh, to adjust for that. So again, the disclaimer here that it's created by Dr. Satyan and uh, does not represent the official position. Of course, he is one of the uh, key people in the AAP committees as well, and uh, very knowledgeable, very humble uh, uh, colleague. So I'm very happy to be sharing this with you. I hope this helps.